three, two. 707, Albert N. Wilmarth. People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos is brought to you by bunnyslippers.com and founditemclothing.com. Hey, Australia and New Zealand and anywhere that is Chile right now, keep your feet warm and cute this winter with some Cthulhu slippers from bunnyslippers.com and get your favorite screen-accurate shirts from your favorite films from founditemclothing.com. Written and edited by Daniel Spitzer, audio by Sarah Fee and Daniel Spitzer. Music by Kevin McLeod. PGTTCM is part of the Dark Myths Collective. You can find them at darkmyths.org. We are engaged in an ongoing discussion of the Cthulhu mythos and its timeline regarding Earth. To be part of it, contact us at pgttcm at gmail.com or join us on Facebook or Twitter. Just search for pgttcm. And remember to rate and review and subscribe to pgttcm on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, listeners, do you want to help help the show out? Uh, one way that you can do that is going to pgttcm.podbean.com and hit the patron button. Donate too and get something cool each month. Early release episodes, unique audio content, otherwise unreleased banter. Contact us about the sticker cult or donate a few dollars to paypal.me slash pgttcm. Greetings, listeners. It is we, D.B. Spitzer and Sarah Fee, here to talk to you once again about the Cthulhu Mythos, its books, its monsters, its unfortunate human casualties, its timelines in general, and even its tangential bits, like the dreamlands, or things of a weird nature, or things that are Lovecraftian leaning. Once more, we head into those dark woods, further feeling those malevolent forces upon us. Once again, we walk down the lightless stone staircase in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. Check out the show's merch table at pgttcm.threadless.com. You can find lots of cool shirts and mugs and stuff there. All original designs of D.B. Spitzer. Or check out the store link on pgttcm.com. And we have new shirts in there, actually. Ooh. Instead of just the logo, we now have a bunch of weird fiction authors Oh yeah, as they... the shirts. Ambrose Spears, mm-hmm. Algernon Blackwood, and a whole bunch more. Even H.P. Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, Clark yeah, Ashton yeah. Smith. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think Series 2 will have things like, I don't know, maybe some uh, Octavia Butler, some... Augie Dog Durleth, uh-huh. maybe some Poe, because everyone's like, how come you never mm-hmm. talk about Poe? Well, we'll I'm sure we'll cover him at some yeah, point. May, may, maybe uh, Lord Dunsany. Who knows? Oh, yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, really, who could we do a tribute to Terry Pratchett? Probably. He's an interesting guy to draw, too. Yeah? Yeah, he wears a hat and got a beard. Okay. Real character. All right. All right. <clears throat> Remember to check out the books review on Amazon.com, and why not use our Amazon link and look for the Strange Behaviors Anthology by Nihilism Revisited, and look for the Micro Story by D.B. Spitzer. Psst. Hey, you. Do you like the Tales from the Crypt series? Do you like spooky things in general? Then check out the Good Evening Kitties podcast. That's Good Evening Kitties podcast. G-O-O-D-E-V-E. N-I-N-G-K-I-D-D-I-E-S podcast. Each week, I'll review a new episode from the TV series, The Tales from the Crypt. Find me on Podbay, Podbean, or iTunes. That's the Good Evening Kitties podcast. Check it out today. All right, so we just finished watching. Well, we didn't finish watching. Well, we just got to the part that we needed to get to (laughs) to do this podcast. That's true of watching The Whisper in Darkness in anticipation for this episode Mm -hmm. about uh, Albert Wilmerth. Yeah, Albert N. Wilmerth. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the N stands for Neil? None your business. None your business. I love it. Noise. (laughs) Noise, yeah. Or perhaps um, (laughs) perhaps it's uh, nincompoop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah, so we watched it. I have to say, it's a pretty interesting story. Um, it's a lot of creepy. The movie's amazing. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society did a heck of a job. A heck of a job. Yep. Nice models, good, mm-hmm. like, use of landscape. 
true. Yeah, no, the thing I'm not a huge fan of is mm -hmm. is the miscellaneous friends and the debate with Charles Fort. And, you know, mm -hmm. that was fun and everything like that. But I, I just think it would have been better if it would have been... I don't know. I don't think it would have been better, but... But Daniel, if they cut that out, you wouldn't have the smiling, slimy guy who's definitely an axe murderer. Oh, it. yeah, I know. But it's like... It's like... That has nothing to do with the story except for but, like I mean, the way cranking out explanatory and, like, dialogue. Smiles at everybody like, yeah. let's go to the murder room. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know. I just feel like there could have been cooler ways to uh, deal with it. Like yeah. even mm -hmm. if it was just like a bunch of stuff, stodgy old professors arguing about stuff in the break room at uh, Miskatonic University. Um, there was other stuff like uh, Chekhov's biplane. I oh, thought yeah. was a bit ridiculous. Well, like, I mean, otherwise, then he gets in the biplane later, and they're like... Yeah, no, no, you establish that before <laughs> you get... You, you establish the fact that he knows how to fly a biplane at some point in time. Yeah. And then have him stumble across something, or be like, oh, hey, I see an air sock. Do you feel like maybe the biplane should have been in it earlier? Like, something along the lines of, like, he had a model plane on his desk in the university and somebody's like what a nice plane and he's like oh i go flying just the like the one sometimes. i have and you know yeah. yeah just like the one i have at the boston airfield you yeah know? i mean just like the one i occasionally take out on the weekends yeah. and that establishes the whole thing but it's a little less obvious yeah i don't know maybe yeah it's like more obvious well i mean if you're gonna have like a bunch of dudes standing around uh spewing out explanatory dialogue mm -hmm. you know what this this is not a uh, this is not a review of the story, is it? <laughs> no, no, this is not a review of the uh, Whisper in Darkness uh, DVD. Yeah, yeah. So which is great, which is great. I really, really do like it. It's really amazing, and frankly, I really, really love the old feeling of it. Like, mm -hmm. I it's an HP Lovecraft story, so the fact that they went all period with it and even like period filming techniques mm -hmm. like it probably would have been cheaper to do a lot of that digitally yeah. in that it's cheaper to do digital than it is to make a model usually unless you're like I've got par I've got all this plaster of Paris and nowhere to use it <laughs> not the usual thing these days but like um, I really admire it it's really it's oh yeah done no very years. ambitious very mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. I mean I bought it as soon as I possibly could. I went and <laughs> saw it at the H.P. Lovecraft Film Festival in Portland as soon as I could. I purchased mean, it. I was super excited. Man, it would be fun to see it up on a big screen. It was. <laughs> oh, wow. Also, so is the H.P. Lovecraft uh, Historical Society's rendition of The Call of Cthulhu. In Audio Audiobooks yeah? is the way to go with H.P. Well, Lovecraft. Yeah, you know you're right, and I should just switch over to that. I'm almost done re-listening to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell for the mm, seventh time. Well, maybe you should listen to some H.P. Lovecraft just to, you know, brush <laughs> up on stuff. You know, I think I should. I have to say, though, I am, well, it's not a, it's not a Susanna Clark's fan site. Yeah. No, no. But I will say, if one was going to brush up on their H.P. Lovecraft via audiobook, a yeah. great way to do it would be going to audibletrial.com slash pgttcm. Oh, yes. You know, just got to plug our Audible thing. Well, yeah, and you know, the thing about Audible is really nice that you can find a lot of stuff on there. I mean, fr frankly, just about anything that's ever been recorded. Yeah. And you can find books and podcasts and radio plays. What? Yeah. I didn't know about podcasts or radio plays. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's really great. Audio mm -hmm. dramas, all sorts of stuff that's been recorded and performed. Mm -hmm. You can find lots of different things there. Probably better quality than the LibriVox <laughs> recordings that we put up. It's possible, although you brush those things up beautifully. I do. I try. Okay. <laughs> Let's get this show on the road, Let's get man. this show on the road, yeah. Welcome to the People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos. No, um, but uh, what do you think of the story itself of, of a Whisper, Whisper in, in Darkness? I really like it. It's, yeah. um, it's creepy. Uh -huh. It makes a lot of sense uh, in that it's totally within the mythos in that like you have these creatures that have a purpose beyond us and mm -hmm. they're working towards that purpose. Yes. And um, they're like, well, we just happen to be here. And I guess if some of you want to come, come along. But nobody can know. Yeah. Because they don't want to, like, be the subject of, you know... They're, like, powerful enough or advanced enough that they are more advanced than human society is at sure. that point. 
but they're like technologically, but they're not so advanced that we can totally fuck up their plans. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's the thing about being humans and science mm -hmm. fiction is like, no matter how technologically advanced you are, humans can fuck up your plans, <laughs> whether it be with the common cold uh, right? or, um, I don't know, um, a big rock, a big rock or, or in case of like, uh, they live, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper and a shotgun and a oh, pair of sunglasses. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And zero bubble gum. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So. So, yeah, that's that's one of the great things about being humans in science fiction is. Yeah, we fuck everything up. We fuck everything up. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Unfortunately, that's not always the case mm. in H.P. Uh, Lovecraft stories. Yes. Oh, only once in a great while do humanity does humanity thwart those trying to bring forth, mm -hmm. reawaken the great old ones? Yeah. This is, uh, this is not the exception to the regular. Uh, as, as we know, Wilmerth wakes up the next day, spoiler alert, finds a wa wax mask, wax hands. So, which makes me uh, want to also talk about something. Um, oh, yeah. People have assumed that uh, what is posing as Akeley is Amigo. It could be a human. It could be a human. It could be something else. An ancient deity. Well, really? What, uh, whose Shaw name Nicaragua? starts with an N. Narlathotep? Possibly. We'll read a part, and you tell me if maybe they're talking about Narlathotep. Okay. Okay. So, let's get started with uh, Albert and Wilmerth and his uh, little trek up to the Vermont woods and his oh gosh. bit Scary. with the Cthulhu mythos in general. Yeah. Can we talk about the wax cylinder real quick? Sure. It's totally cool, right? Yeah, it is. Man, I love that old kind of technology. Yeah. Is the lord of the woods even to and the gifts of the men of Lang. So from the wells of night to the gulfs of space, and from the gulfs of space to the wells of night, ever the praises of great Cthulhu and Sathagua, and of him who is not to be named, even their praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods, Ea Shabnigareth, the great, the goat with a thousand young. Yeah, and it has come to pass that the Lord of the Woods, being seven and nine, down the onyx steps, tributes to him in the gulf, Azathoth, he of whom thou hast taught us, Marv, of the wings of night out beyond space and beyond the, of that, of that, whereof Yagath is the youngest child, rolling alone in the black ether at the rim. Go out to the land and find the way down, that he and the ghost may know, till now at the top, bloody messenger, left all things be told, and he shall put on and some of the men, and that soon mask, and the world that hides, and come down from the world of seven sons to us. Nara Lethotep, great messenger, bringer of the strange joy to Yagoth through the void, father of a million favored ones, stalker among... An instructor of literature at Miskatonic University in Arkham, Massachusetts, when local newspapers report strange things seen floating in rivers during a historic Vermont flood, Wilmarth becomes embroiled in a controversy about the reality and significance of the sightings though he sides with the skeptics blaming old legends about the monsters living Un in uninhabited hills who abduct people who venture too close to their territory. He receives a letter from one Henry Wentworth Akeley, a man who lives in an isolated farmhouse near Townsend, Vermont. He affirms that he has proof that will convince Wilmarth that he must stop focusing on the race's existence. The two exchange letters, including a... Thank you. I read this too. No sugar in that. Good point. 
You want me to start over? Uh, I don't remember where you were, so... You can go start wherever you want. Okay. An instructor of literature at Miskatonic University in Arkham, Massachusetts, when local newspapers report strange things floating in rivers during a historic Vermont flood, Wilmerth becomes embroiled in a controversy about the reality and significance of the sightings. Though he sides with the skeptics, blaming old legends about monsters living in uninhabited hills who abduct people who venture too close to their territory. He receives a letter from one Henry Wentworth Akeley, a man who lives in an isolated farmhouse near Townsend, Vermont. He affirms that he, affirms that he has proof that will convince Wilmerth that he must stop focusing on the race's existence. The two exchange letters, including a record of the extraterrestrial race chanting with human agents, who worship several beings, including Cthulhu and Narolethotep. The latter of whom shall put on the semblance of men, the waxen mask, and the robe that hides. Cool. The agents intercept Akeley's messages and harass his farmhouse nightly. Akeley and the agents extend, exchange gunfire, and many of Akeley's guard dogs are killed. Although Akeley expresses more in his letters, he abruptly has to a change of heart. He writes that he has met with the extraterrestrial beings and has learned that they are peaceful. Furthermore, they have taught him of marvels beyond imagination. He urges Wilmarth to pay him a visit and to bring along the letters and photographic evidence that he has sent him. Wilmarth reluctantly consents. You will probably call me raving at first, Wilmarth, but in time you will appreciate the titanic opportunity I've stumbled upon. I want you to share as much of it as possible. And to that end must tell you thousands of things that won't go on paper. In the past, I have warned you not to come to see me. Now that it is all safe, I take pleasure in rescinding that warning and inviting you. Can't you make the trip up here before your college term opens? It would be marvelously delightful if you could bring along the phonograph record and any of my letters as consultive data. We shall need them in piecing together the whole tremendous story. You might bring the Kodak prints, too, since I seem to have mislaid my negatives and my own prints in all this recent excitement. But what a wealth of facts I have to add to all this groping and tentative material, and what a stupendous device I have to supplement my additions. Don't hesitate. I am free from espionage now, and you will not meet anything unnatural or disturbing. Just come along and... Let my car meet you at the Battleboro Station. Prepare to stay as long as you can, and expect many an evening of discussion of things beyond all human conjecture. Don't tell anyone about it, of course, for this matter must not get to the promiscuous public. The train service to Battleboro is not bad. You can get a timetable in Boston, take the B&M to Greenfield, and then change for a brief remainder of the way. I suggested taking the Forte. Pardon this typed letter, but my handwriting has grown shaky of late. As you know, I don't feel equal to long stretches of script. I got this new Corona in Battleboro yesterday. It seems to work very well. Awaiting word and hoping to see you shortly with the phonograph record in all my letters. And the Kodak prints. <laughs> Wilmarth arrives to find Akeley in a pitiful physical condition, immobilized in a chair in darkness. Akeley tells Wilmarth about the extraterrestrial race and the wonders they have revealed to him. He also says that the beings can surgically extract a human brain and place it into a canister where it can live indefinitely and withstand the rigors of outer space travel and shows proof to Wilmarth. Akeley says he has agreed to undertake such a journey and points to a cylinder bearing his name. Wilmarth also listens to a brain, brain in a cylinder as it speaks of the positive aspects of the journey and why Wilmarth should join it on a trip to Yagoth, the being's homeworld. During these conversations, Wilmarth feels a vague sense of unease, especially from Akeley's odd manner of buzzing whispering. During the night, a sleepless Wilmarth overhears a disturbing conversation with several voices, some of which are distinctly bizarre. Once all is silent, he creeps downstairs to investigate. He finds that Akeley is no longer present, but the robe he was wearing is discarded in a chair. Upon a closer look, 
he makes a horrifying discovery amid the folds of the robe, which sends him fleeing the farmhouse by stealing Akeley's car. When the authorities investigate the next day, they find nothing but a bullet-ridden house. Akeley has disappeared along with all the physical evidence of the extraterrestrial presence. As the story concludes, Wilmarth discloses the discovery from which he fled in terror. Akeley's discarded face and hands. These were utilized by something inhuman to disguise itself as a man. He now believes with the dreadful certainty that the cylinder in that dark room with that whispering creature already contained the brain of Henry Wentworth Akeley. Wilmarth is described as a folklorist and assistant professor of English at Miskatonic University. He investigates the strange events that followed in the wake of historic Vermont floods in 1927. Wilmarth is also mentioned in Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness, where the narrator remarks that he wishes he hadn't talked so much with that unpleasant, unpleasantly erudite folklorist Wilmarth at the university. Elsewhere, the story refers to the wild tales of cosmic hill things from outside told by a folklorist colleague in Miskatonic's English department. Wilmarth is the main character in Fritz Lieber's To Arkham and the Stars, written and presumably set in 1966, when the now septuagenarian professor is a chair of Miskatonic Literature's department. Uh, Lieber describes him as slender and silver-haired, with a mocking sardonic note, which has caused some to call him unpleasantly rather than simply very erudite. He acknowledges keeping in rather close touch with the Plutonians of Eugothians and perhaps even old Diergesses. Wilmarth remarks in the story, after you've spent an adult lifetime at Miskatonic, you discover you've developed a rather different understanding from the herds of the distinction between the imaginary and the real. A passage from the Whisper in Darkness, Whisperer in Darkness contains a series of mythos names, some of which are briefly mentioned but are never explained. I found myself faced by the names and terms that I had heard elsewhere in the most hideous of connections. Yugoth, Great Cthulhu, Sathagwa, Yog sothoth Ralye, Narlethotep, Azathoth, Hastur, Yin, Lang, the Lake of Hali, Bethmora, the Yellow Sign, Lemur, Cathonus, Bran, and Magnum Inuminandium. Magnum Inuminandium. While most, of While most of these places and things are well-known figures of the mythos, a few are harder to pin down. Among them, Beth Mora was a fabled city in the eponymous story of Lord Dunsany, a favorite author of Lovecraft. Bran is an ancient British pagan deity. However, in this context, Lovecraft was referring to Bran McMorrin, last king of the Picts in Robert E. Howard's sword and sorcery fiction. The reference is an homage to Howard, one of his correspondents. Lemur may refer to Lemuria, a fabled land bridge to a second continent in the mythos. Cthulhu is an Atlantean sorcerer, the titular character of Robert E. Howard's story Skullface. A fan had written to Howard asking if Cthulhus was derived from Cthulhu and Howard mentioned this in a letter to Lovecraft. Ha Lovecraft liked the thought and replied that he might accept, adopt the name into the mythos in the future. Magnum Inominandium means the great not to be named in Latin. Jan re probably refers to Jan Ho in the story Through the Gates of the Silver Key. 1934, a collaboration between Lovecraft and E. Hoffman Price. Yan Ho is a dreadful and forbidden city on the plateau of Lang, but it also may refer to the f fictional city of Yan in the weird short story The Maker of Moons, published in 1896 in the collection of the same name by one of Laf Lovecraft's most favorite authors, Robert W. Chambers. Speaking of Chambers, next week we will be reading King in Yellow. All right, so, Sarah, yes. what did you think of the story? The Whisper. Or the Whisper the, in Darkness? Yeah, that well, one. Well, I really liked the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of the story summary and the uh, bits and pieces that oh, I 
liked that too. I so like um of course the usual complaints of where the heck are all the ladies? Yeah. And aren't you glad there aren't any ladies in this? You know, it is nice to know that there's not like some horror that comes out of a female body in this film yeah. or in this movie uh, story. That's true. Or or a female trapped with some horror for the rest of her life. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's also nice. There's it's nice to it's nice to see that like this I mean, it's not like it's like a bunch of dirty women ma- who are, you know, consorting with the aliens. Nope. It's actual just white people. Yeah. There was a, a line in the reading you said something like promiscuous. Okay, here it is. It's um, in the letter that uh, Akeley is sent to Wilmerth and it's uh, do not hesitate. I am free from, from espionage, espionage now. And at the end of this paragraph he says, do not tell anyone about it of course, for this matter must not get to the promiscuous public. Which is yet another reference to H.P. Lovecraft's fear of mixing and oh, like yeah. how there's a lot of different kinds of people in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, who is it? Uh, who is it that mixes with the aliens? Why wow, a bunch of rustics? Oh no. yeah, good actually point. no, no. It's a it's a fancy city guy from Boston. <laughs> Jeez, H.P. Get it get get it right. Yeah, come you on. You don't like rustics. <laughs> you don't like rustics and women. What? Oh no, no. Apparently, he doesn't like people from Boston either. Because he just uh, doesn't like a lot Pickman. of people. Yeah. Oh no, no. I mean, you know. Yeah, right. Pickman, right. Pickman Bostonian. in Boston, and well, there's a lot of different kinds of people in Boston. Yeah, yeah. Talk not, about not, not like all the public. respectable people from Providence, <laughs> Rhode Island. What is it? The heterogeneous diaspora. <laughs> uh, that's from the ter- terrible old man. Yep, yep. That is from the terrible old man. Yeah. So. I I liked it in that it was creepy and it had this really nice like twist at the end uh-huh. and it's ominous and yeah. has um it's a really well told story sure. which is nice sure um yeah yeah and I like that it's kind of like um uh, if you will a, a clip show story yeah because it mentions all these other parts of the mythos oh yeah within this one short story sure yeah. So I like that aspect of it, too. Yeah. Well, it's one thing that's really nice, or one thing that I have to say, and a lot of people can say about the Cthulhu mythos, is no one ever straight up says, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's people who, like, look at all of the writing now and, like, try and, like, make shape of it like uh, Augie Dog Derleth did. Sure. And, you know, there's mythos scholars that do that. But honestly, what they are when they're doing that is not being mythos scholars. They're being game designers. Fanboys. Well, no, no, no. It's like, oh, we got to make sense of this. We got to catalog it. And it's like, well, why? Why do we need stats? Why do we need to know how big something is if it's unnameable and undescribable? You know what? That's a good point. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Anyway, but Mm. enough about that. Oh, yeah, and that's another thing I liked about the movie is yeah. that they had, like, bits of the whatever alien things they were, uh-huh. you know, and they had that shadow, uh-huh. but they didn't, like, actually show one. Well, we get into that a little bit later. Oh, I missed that part, did I? Yeah, yeah. I think it's, like, the <laughs> uh, CGI that they use. Oh, the bit of CGI. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. I can't remember if they used a puppet and then had to CGI over it or if they actually just CGI'd an amigo. Mm. But they're pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, no, their use of shadow of... Uh, suggestion. Suggestion of the Migo is, is pretty, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I uh, now agree with you that it's probably Narolethotep underneath that waxen mask. Yeah. Given the dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I noticed that in the movie, they use the same voice for... Akeley as they do for the um, um, the Migos on the recording. Yeah. So they must have thought that it was a Migo. We don't like this. I'm going to put more buzz into that. Bzz, 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 bzz. Here, I'll do the buzzing. You do the talking. Bzz. I'm William Akeley. Akeley. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that comes out. <laughs> yeah, me too. Or... I, I even said the wrong name. I don't care. William Akeley? Yeah, what is his name? Uh, uh, old Man Akeley. Old Man Akeley. Old Empty Body. Old 
old got some guns and dogs and stay off my property. <laughs> old wax face. Yeah, old not really a person. <laughs> old brain in a cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> let's God. talk about the Amigo brain cylinders for oh a moment. Oh my gosh, yeah, let's talk about that. So, Do you know how many people like wish that that was a real thing? Uh, nowadays, yeah. a lot of people. Can we talk about how Futurama kind of totally bit that? Yeah. With the head and jars. I mean, yeah. I always thought that it was just a part of like science fiction culture. Yeah. But is this like its first appearance? To my knowledge, yeah. Uh, there might be one or two before that in mm -hmm. like popular science or mm -hmm. not popular science, but like astounding stories. But yeah. to my knowledge, this is the earliest uh, brain in a jar in science fiction, not in philosophy kind of. Interesting. Oh, I mean, the brain in the jar kind of philosophy uh, concept is like, if your mind as you know it, like the thinking part of you is removed and yeah. put something else, would you know it if you were given, anyway. Sort of a... Kind of like, what Frankenstein. If, well, no, no, it's like, how do we know we're not a brain in a jar kind of thing? How do we know that we're not a... That is a good philosophical um, question. Like a mind that's stored somewhere and being given information. Very, um... Uh, matrix yeah, question. Yeah. And, you know, it's like back in the day, people would be like, oh, brain in the jar. But nowadays you could be like, oh, um, mind in a simulation. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, because, I mean, the guy in the story says that his, the, the brain in the jar guy says that when he's not plugged in, it's just kind of like he's sleeping. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do you remember the Tom Cruise movie Vanilla Sky? Didn't see it. Oh. In Spanish, it's called Abre los, os los Ojos. Okay. And um, he's a rich guy. And okay. He's living a rich guy life, and then his life starts falling apart. Mm -hmm. He starts like hallucinating that his face is melted mm -hmm. and all this weird stuff. And the girl he's in love with dies. Mm -hmm. And then this random dude shows up and says, hey, you're in a simulation, and you seem to have broken down, and now's your choice of whether or not you want to come out of this simulation and see what life is, you know, become since you've been in here, or do you want to stay in some more? Hmm. Yeah, and apparently he had ha had the simulation reset like 260 times. I haven't seen the Spanish version, but I think I would like to. They both have Penelope Cruz in it as the love interest. Uh, oh, there's there's one that like predates the Tom Cruise one? Yeah, there was okay. a Spanish version called Abre los Ojos. Oh, okay, I thought you were just telling me that like the name of no, Vanilla Sky in like, Spanish was oh, I this. I don't even know how to say Like sky. someone being like, oh, hey, did you know that the name of Gangs of New York in, when like, I saw it in Prague is de Gangi New, New York. <laughs> <laughs> equipo de New York. No, um, Nueva York. No, no, no. No, no. It, it, there was a Spanish movie that mm -hmm. was made, Abre, Abre los Ojos. And... Um, then they remade it with Tom Cruise yeah. in America, and it was called We need to stay on topic. Sky. Sorry. <laughs> We've got it's a really 15 beautiful, minutes. <laughs> it's a really beautiful movie. Uh -huh. And it, it, but I, I like the idea of, you know, like what happens when you're in a jar. Yeah. 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 yeah no, no. Brain in a jar. Uh, you could also call uh, that one Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Uh, oh, yeah. Are you talking about... Um, Total Recall. Total Recall. Total Recall. That's Where they implant memories. They implant memories. So one of the things they say in the movie anyway is that the brains and jars can travel to different planets yes. and experience sensory input yes. that you can't experience in your body. Yes. But my question, and it's a bit philosophical, is can the human mind, can the human brain absorb sensory input that is not... From the human body? Well, according to uh, some guy who got picked up in the Himalayans by the Migo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and anytime he wants, they'll just unpack his meat bod and he can walk around and do stuff. I think he's lying about that part. Well, probably. I think he was sold a bill of goods, man. Yep, yep. I think he's going to get an Amigo body. Yeah, no, 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 or possibly, possibly he's like, hey, if you get this Wilmerth guy to uh, oh, yeah, get yeah. his brain in a jar, Wilmerth maybe body. you can get his mm. body. Who he's knows? He's a lanky fella. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, where does Naraletho tap? Is this this is this more like kind of like how? Uh, um, okay, is Naraletho tap there to spread the good word mm. with his migos? Like, mm. is Naraletho tap like, hey? 
Well, if the Migos are there to spread the good word, how come they want to be so secretive? Uh, they're building something, oh. possibly. And there's also a bit of talk in the story and in the movie about how where they're from, Yagoth, will not uh, be seen until they want it to be seen. And the end of the oh. story is about Wilmerth finding, or uh, Wilmerth learning that they've discovered a planet far, far, far oh. off the edge of the solar system. This is during the discovery of Pluto. Pluto. Yes. Which is not a planet, I hear. <laughs> Cutting that part out. <laughs> well, that's what I hear. I, I don't believe it. Well, you're just, just <laughs> talking right now because all this part's being cut out. Pluto wouldn't be seen to them until they want it to be seen. So mm -hmm. the Migo are getting ready for something. Wilmerth has not stopped anything. And Lovecraft didn't write any more about it, so we don't know what he entailed for to happen. But it seems to me that the Migo are planning some sort of possible invasion, some sort of massive mining operation, uh, something. Well, they do live in caves, so maybe mining for sure. I mean... I mean, one of the tropes of science fiction is that aliens come to our planet because they want to... Raw you know, materials. They want all the materials that our planet affords. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's a possibility, I suppose. But maybe the Migo just want our mental capacity. Possibly. Maybe that's why they invented, you know... Reality, Brain cylinders? Reality TV. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, what purpose do the Migo have of transporting uh, minds of of beings around the universe? I mean, are they some sort of like mm, like really good people? I doubt that. Philanthropy? Yeah. Philanthropic no. No, they, experience? No, they hang out in the woods with Bostonians Lovers. and shout to the <laughs> the to the great old ones and the, uh, yeah, the I outer gods. I, and I doubt that that's, I mean, it's H.P. Lovecraft yeah. so nobody's Nobody's just giving away. No. Yeah. No. I I don't know. I, I pff, it's what the hell were they doing? Hard to say. Mm -hmm. I, I think invasion of some sort was on way, and mm -hmm. also spreading of their religion, making way for the return of the great old ones. Just mm -hmm. like I don't know. I, I still think old man Waitley was like, oh, if I have a grandson who's part God, that'll make you know it'll yeah. bring about the return of the old ones. And it's like, no, no. Uh, that, that, that'll be like uh, that'll be like the apostle. That'll that'll be like the uh, what do you call those guys? Messiah. The Messiah. Like the, like the Jesus Christ. Guy. Yeah, like yeah. the Christ figure for that religion mm -hmm. that people can like mm -hmm. be like, yay! It's a it's it's like us, but it's also like them. Yeah, but humans <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. But hey, humans are like that. Human over there is nothing like me. He's not really human. Yeah. That's how humans are. I, I know. I know. Okay. But Wizard Waitley was mad. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe he was a conclusionist. Yeah, and then great old ones. They have no idea what humans are like. They're great old ones. Why would they need to know? They yeah, have alien minds. We're nothing but slime on the foot of the cosmos. Yeah. But who knows? Who knows? Who I don't know. Indeed. The Migo, hard to tell. Wilmerth went on to do things and continue to warn people about stuff. He warns people of the uh, Dire Lake... Uh, mission or a dire lake exploration of the south pole in the mount at the mountains of madness also written uh, also written by hp lovecraft mm -hmm. so he shows up again and uh I'm over this in the episode yeah yeah oh i know i know but just kind of a recap mm -hmm. but yeah so that's that's albert wilmerth albert n wilmerth yeah albert no name wilmerth so thank you for listening to people's guide to the cthulhu mythos uh, we'll see you next time. This yeah. has been Daniel and Sarah. Sarah Fee. Yeah, Daniel Spitzer. Next time, uh, next episode will be about, uh, be a King in Yellow King reading. King in Yellow reading. And then the next major episode will be about uh, the weights. Wait, Ooh. wait, don't tell me. <laughs> We're going to be talking about... Wait, wait, I don't want to know. <laughs> we're going to be talking about... The thing on the doorstep. Well, we're going to be going into more about the people on the thing mm -hmm, on the doorstep, mm -hmm. into their family. We'll be talking about ones that don't live forever because they're not going to turn into fish people. Okay. The ones who have wives that are never seen. Right, right. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. All right. Next time. Next time. People's <laughs> dead.
remember to stay squiggly. And keep it weird is something I'm going to say at the end of this, but I need to remember to say that. And okay. also, that People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos is brought to you by BunnySlippers.com, FoundItemClothing.com. It's a member of the Dark Myths Collective, DarkMyths.org, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, PGTTCM.com, PGTTCM.Podbean.com, PayPal, dot me slash pgttcm pgttcm dot threadless dot com mm-hmm. and I'm just recording all that stuff now so I can cut and paste it later right right in case you forget well no sense. no actually I just did it then so I will have to do it later I'll just cut and paste it <laughs> off the end. Nice. a music by Kevin McLeod <laughs> <laughs>